Welcome to this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. On today's edition, we're going to talk about food and books. Specifically, we're going to highlight the upcoming Suffolk Restaurant Week Fall Encore Edition and also talk about some of the things that are going on throughout Suffolk Public Library. So stay tuned. Welcome back to On the Scene. We're coming to you today from Cedar Point Country Club, home to one of the sites for this year's Fall Restaurant Week. And joining us today to talk about Restaurant Week, one of the fabulous topics we have to discuss on this program is Cameron Robinette, who of course is the president out here at Cedar Point, and Katie Kelly, who is also the Tourism Development Specialist. Thank you both for being with us today. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Well, let's kick it off and talk about Restaurant Week. And Katie, I'll let you help us on that. Talk about what Restaurant Week is all about. And it happens twice a year yes, throughout the year. city of Suffolk. Of course, mm -hmm. we only certain restaurants are going to be uh, participating, but what is the concept and what kind of goes on during Restaurant Week? Well, Restaurant Week has turned into one of our premier events. Uh, we have it twice a year, usually in uh, November and also in the spring mm -hmm. during March. And uh, what it essentially boils down to is it's a great way to check out any of the restaurants that are in town. Um, we try to get as many uh, diverse restaurants as we can, and they offer a price fix menu. Uh, either at the deluxe level, which is $10 for lunch and $20 for dinner, uh, or at the premier level, which is $15 for lunch and $30 for dinner. Okay. And there's no coupons to, to bring in, no tickets to punch, nothing. You don't need to bring in a little book or anything like that. Um, we post all of the information uh, you know, prior to the event and say which restaurants are going to be participating. Mm -hmm. And generally we get anywhere from 10 to 16 restaurants. Um, so it's a really great deal. It's a, it's a good way to you know, try out something that you haven't seen in a while. Right. Now, of course, with the price that you're paying, it's price fixed as far as mm -hmm. the items that are on the restaurant week menu. Yes. Now, what does that get you? Three course meal? Right? Uh, yes, three course okay. meal. Um, you get to choose from anywhere from two to three. Sometimes even some restaurants will do as many as four appetizer choices. Mm -hmm. um, then there's three to five different uh, entree um, choices that you can make. And then they also have desserts set up for you. So um, for that price, and especially for the upscale restaurants, right. it's a great way to try out something that you've been saying, you know, I'd really like to try that, but sure. I haven't been there yet. Right. So this is your shot. This and of course, one of the it. great things about Restaurant Week is that you can partake as many times as yes. you want throughout the week. And we're talking lunch and dinner at all the yes. sites. Yes. And then, as you noted, y'all have a website that will have all the menus mm -hmm. and, of course, all the times and locations and everything. So mm -hmm. you can kind of check it out ahead of time, correct? Yes, yes that's right. Our website is um, uh, www.suffolk-fun.com. And if you want to go to the Restaurant Week uh, section, there will be a header on the main page. Okay. Uh, but we also have, um, you know, a, a section that you can you can check out from from that main page. Right. So. Okay. Now, Cameron, of course, we're here at Cedar Point, and of course, let's talk about the fact this is the third time you're, you're Restaurant third Week time, participating that's right. in Restaurant <laughs> Week. Um, just talk about some of your past experience with Restaurant Week and how that's gone for you. Sure. Now, it's uh, been a great experience for us. Uh, one of the things that we like about Restaurant Week the most is that it gives the Su Suffolk residents uh, and other people around Tidewater the opportunity to come to Cedar Point when they otherwise would not have that ability. Uh, we are uh, typically a, a, a private club uh, for our membership, but uh, this being the third time, this will be the third time that we have opened our doors to the public to, to give everybody a glimpse of, of what we have uh, to offer. And, and we're, we're very excited about this fall. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've really worked hard on in the last couple of years is uh, I think most people know us for the quality of our golf course uh, and, and we've worked really hard to have a restaurant that matches the, the, uh, the quality of, uh, of the golf course. Um, having executive chef Jose Perez with us uh, for a little over a year now, I can safely say he's, he's really transformed uh, our restaurant here. Very nice. So that means he's battle tested for restaurant week, correct? <laughs> now, normally your restaurant is not open uh, during the, the days that we're talking about for restaurant week. Is that correct? That's as well? right. That's right. We are. Uh, restaurant week is Saturday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not be open that Monday, but uh, we will expand our hours during restaurant week. So we'll be, we will be open for lunch and for dinner every night, okay. uh, save for that for Monday night. Okay. Now, what are some of the things we can expect out of restaurant week from Cedar Point this year? Well, uh, Executive uh, Chef Perez, he really works hard on trying to source locally um, uh, the freshest ingredients that he can find, especially on the, on the seafood side. I, I know that most of the folks here in Suffolk, they know their seafood, and if you don't give them uh, stuff that's straight out of the water, they're right. going to know about it. Right. So he prides himself on that, uh, and, and one of the things that we've had su some success with uh, prior to in, in Restaurant Week is the table side service. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 
the folks that came to see us the last couple of times that really enjoyed uh, the table side Caesar salad, uh, which we'll be doing another table side salad, but this time will be a Greek. Uh, we did a table side Cherry's Jubilee for dessert. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do a, a table side Bananas Foster's in, instead this time. So really to get uh, the, the wait staff uh, and, and the patrons interacting and right. enjoying the whole dining experience. Uh, what's different, I think, this time around versus the first two is that we've completely revamped our wine list. Mm -hmm. um, we scrapped it and started completely from scratch, went with three different uh, uh, companies and, and going through an extensive tasting process with our staff and with members. Uh, and we have what I think is, is a small but great, great list of, of name wines at uh, some very, very competitive prices. Right. Now, of course, one of the unique things about here, and of course we have a chance to see it from our, our vantage point here, is you have such a great view over here. Uh, if you can just talk about some of the amenities that Cedar Point has in addition to the restaurant, which of course in Restaurant Week, that's what's going to bring you that's here. Right. But it, it, as you said, this facility is so much more than that. Yeah, well, it, we, are, uh, we are a full service country club mm -hmm. um, and, and we do have the, the dining facility. Uh, we have an 18 hole championship golf course, um, which was renovated about 10 years ago. Uh, along with that was the development of a nine hole par three course. Mm -hmm. Uh, the view that we're enjoying out here right now, 10 years ago, you wouldn't be able to even see the water because of the growth. Right. Uh, and, and with the redesign, uh, we were able to put in a nine-hole par three course, which wraps around the river. Right. Uh, and what you'll see is, is most of our members enjoying a Saturday or Sunday afternoon out there barefoot uh, <laughs> with, a, with a wedge and a putter just enjoying the sun on the right. afternoon. Uh, and, we, and we do also have a uh, swimming pool that's, mm -hmm. that's open in season as well as uh, four outdoor tennis courts and an indoor tennis facility uh, for those folks that want to play tennis in, right. in the wintertime. Now, of course, you also have, in addition to the restaurant, you also offer banquet opportunities in, fa in a facility that the public can take advantage of, correct? That's right. That's right. We do, uh, we do have any number of member events that occur here, but we are available for private parties and mm -hmm. banquets. Uh, we have found that any number of folks now are starting to combine their wedding ceremony and reception. Right. And one of the things uh, that, that we are fortunate with here is that we have the ability to accommodate both. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've done any number of, of weddings where the ceremony will be held outside overlooking the river um, and come in for the, the reception right. or vice versa. So um, we, we can accommodate those groups upwards of 200, 250 people. Right. Now, of course, um, as far as you noted, as far as how you are participating, you're going to be at the premier level, is that correct? That's right. And, of course, this is a really unique opportunity, as you said off the top, that uh, people normally don't have the opportunity to take advantage and, and kind of sample what Cedar Point has to offer, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, but this is your opportunity to get in here and kind of see what, what's going on, kind of look around the facility, as you noted, uh, you know, interact with your wait staff and really enjoy what you have to offer here. That's right. And, and we're very proud of what, what we've been able to accomplish, uh, especially in the last, the last couple of years. And... And we really just want to invite everybody that has heard about us but has been fearful of coming because we are a private club right. or they don't think it's for them, just to give us a shot. Sure. Uh, just come in, have, a, have a, uh, an affordable meal with us and mm -hmm. um, mingle with our members a little right. bit. And, and if they're interested uh, in wanting access to the club going forward, then we're happy to talk to them about that. Right. Now, of course, when they come for Restaurant Week, uh, reservations are encouraged, correct? That's right. They're not, they're not required, but... Uh, certainly, they're, they're strongly encouraged, and, and that helps us give as good of a service as we right. can with, when, they know, when we know they're coming. Gotcha. Now, Katie, as far as, you know, we're talking about Cedar Point, but obviously there's a multitude of restaurants that will mm -hmm. be participating, and yes. the website is probably a great resource yes. to go because that's going to be changing over time. Yes, we actually just received uh, two or three new restaurants today, so mm -hmm. it is going to be changing probably right up until the start of the event, which starts on November 2nd. Right. So um, I encourage viewers to definitely go and check out our website at um, www.suffolk-fun.com. Okay. And uh, we'll have the menus posted. Um, we have hours of operation. Mm -hmm. There's a small description of each restaurant, so you right. can kind of fit your party to sure. your to your restaurant of choice. Um, and it's just a great way to sample something that you might not have tried before. So. Exactly. And of course, I think that philosophy can apply to any of the restaurants yes. that are included. Uh, but again, talk about the fact that you, you, you go in, 
you have a you have a menu mm -hmm. that you'll be presented as far as a restaurant week menu, but you also have the regular menu as yes, well. Yes, you do. Um, a lot of our restaurants will provide that participate will provide the Suffolk restaurant week menu, mm -hmm. um, but some folks when they see it say, well, "I'm not too sure about that one. I'm going right. to order off the menu," and right. that's no problem at all. Sure. You don't you're not stuck in one position Correct. or another. Um, you can you can have one thing off of one and one right. off the other. So um, we're pretty flexible where that where that's concerned. So. Um, I think most people will find that there's something for everybody on right. these menus. So. Indeed, indeed. And I think with the multitude and the variety that's being offered as well, is a great chance to sample what Suffolk is all about, mm -hmm. whether from the northern part of Suffolk, downtown, all across the great city. So it's a good yes. opportunity there. Now talk again about the price points as far uh, as how that's broken up. Uh, we have the two levels. Uh, one is the deluxe level, mm -hmm. and that would be a $10 lunch and a $20 dinner. Okay. Uh, the premier level is a uh, $15 lunch and a $30 dinner. And right. again, you do not need any cards or coupons or um, passbooks or anything like right. that. You basically just make your reservations, as Cameron said, mm -hmm. um, or stop by a place and see if they've got availability, and um, they'll fit you in. Okay. Now, Cameron, we didn't have it mentioned this already, but uh, if you give us a contact phone number and maybe mention your website as well, as far as in case anybody's watching the program sure. would sure. like to get that reservation. Our, our website is www.cedarpointcountryclub.com, mm -hmm. all spelled out. Uh, reservations can be made by calling 238-2275, and uh, someone uh, will be happy to take that for either lunch or dinner any day. Great, great. And Katie, as far as what's the number for the visitor center that if people would like more information about Restaurant Week, maybe that we haven't covered in the course, maybe see something on the website they have a question about? Sure. What's um, the number there? You can actually call the visitor center at any right. time. Uh, we're open 9 to 5, um, Monday through well, actually, all week long. Right. <laughs> um, and our number is 757-514-4130. And um, our visitor center advisors are there to ask, answer any questions right. that you might have. Um, and we do have more than just Restaurant Week. That's right. Uh, so if you see something that you're interested in on the website, give us a call and we'll try to talk you through it. So, um, you know, we try to get as many folks in the door as possible. A lot of great things going on in Suffolk. Indeed, indeed. And, of course, one of the other great things is that we have the Fall Restaurant Week we're talking about today. But there's another one coming up in the spring. Yes. So we can't, not too early, to always talk <laughs> about that? Yes, we actually have it planned. Um, it's going to be March 15th through the 22nd. Okay. Um, as of right now, we ha we don't have anybody signed up. Right. We're, <laughs> we're still trying to get, we're still <laughs> trying to get, get fall, fall first, yeah. um, But that's always a very successful one too. Um, I think it's just the beginning of the um, spring and summer season. Right. People want to be out trying, trying new things. So, sure. um, you know, if you can't get to them all during the fall, right. we've got another one coming in the spring. Good so. deal. Okay. Well, that's it for our Restaurant Week segment. I want to thank Cameron and Katie for being with us today. And again, uh, check out the Restaurant Week website. We'll have that address up on the screen. So you can check out all the menus, find out where you want to go for those lunch or dinner options during the week of Restaurant Week. So again, a great opportunity to, to sample what Suffolk has to offer. We'll have more on the scene when we return. Welcome back to On the Scene. We're coming to you now from the North Suffolk Library, and we're joined by Clint Rudy, the Library Director, and Alicia Finney, who is the Branch Manager here at North Suffolk. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. And you know, one of the unique things about the Suffolk Library System is the fact that there's always something going on. And really, I think one of the catchphrases I've heard is it's really not just about books anymore. And I think that's what we're here to talk about today, because whether you know it or not, the Suffolk Libraries offer a variety of programs in addition to, obviously, the books. You see them behind us. <laughs> and all kind of digital media, which we're going to get into a little bit today as well. So, Alicia, I think we'll start with you. And if you could talk about some of the upcoming events, ongoing events, and activities that are happening throughout the Suffolk Libraries, as far as uh, that people can participate in. Most of these, I believe, are free. They are. They are. Um, I think we're best known for our youth family services mm -hmm. programs, programs for your preschooler, programs for your toddler. Um, story time is always happening here. Um, it's kind of an ongoing program, right. and um, those happen on Tuesday and Thursday mornings mm -hmm. at all three of our branches. Um, well, Chuck Tuck, it happens on Wednesday mornings, okay. but Morgan and North Suffolk um, is um, Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Mm -hmm. um, no registration required. You can just come. Um, your toddler time is more for birth through three years old. Mm -hmm. Toddler is three to five. Right. Um, our preschool is three to five. And, um, and they, you know, teach them a variety of things. I mean, there are books involved, but there's singing, there's right. um, games, there's hands-on things they can do, and really um, providing those early childhood development skills that can get them ready for right. kindergarten and, um, and learning um, in a classroom style. So very fun. Um, we also have a, a big um, holiday event coming up at the end of this month, okay. our Pumpkin Palooza <laughs> going on at North Suffolk. Right. And um, that's a time where your child can come and dress up in their Halloween costume before Halloween comes right. and 
like trick or treat through the library. Nice. Um, there's a dance party, and there's also a pumpkin decorating contest. The staff is going to decorate pumpkins, and nice. the kids get to vote on which one they think is the best. Okay. Um, so you know, lots of things going <coughs> on for your child, um, but that's not all. Right. There's um, also programs going on for adults as well. Right. Um, computer classes um, at uh, Morgan and at um, at North Suffolk. Mm -hmm. Um, North Suffolk mainly focuses on um, introductory classes, getting to know the computer, the mouse, the keyboard, right. um, and then also um, getting to know Windows, the program, and also they have a Microsoft Word um, class one and two for beginners and for a more advanced um, class, and those usually happen on Thursday mornings. Okay. And you do need to register because computers are limited. Right. And so, um, you know, call up to the branch or look on our website and find out when those registration times are so you can get involved with that. Um, we also have a really great um, partnership that we're um, partnering with the Master Gardeners in November to talk about planting winter bulbs um, on November 4th. And so definitely look into that if you're interested in gardening. Um, and we'd love to have people come out for that. Now, who is, who is handling the, the youth programs, adult programs? Is it library staff in most instances? It is. Okay. It is. Our children's staff is phenomenal, and they are really great with kids. They're really great at, um, you know, choosing stories and choosing um, kind of um, the Every Child Ready to Read right. um, theme, you know, the different um, skills that we that we know that kids need right. to get them ready for, um, for class and for, for school coming up. So, um, so each story time is kind of based around one of those themes and, you know, they're telling parents and giving handouts and helping them to not only learn in the story time, but also take it home right. and um, back up those skills. So okay. they're really great. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Well, Clint, it sounds like you have a great staff throughout the library as yes. far as here in the city of Suffolk. And of course, again, we want to note there are three. Yes. So again, you know, North Suffolk, uh, Morgan Memorial, which is of course downtown, and the Chuckatuck branch. So again, you have three libraries that encompass everything Suffolk has to offer in that capacity. But we talked about earlier, um, you know, it's not just about books, but certainly, Clint, if you could talk about some of the new electronic media that's available to people through the Suffolk libraries that, um, again, no charge. It's a matter of just having, a, I believe, a current library card and obviously signing up for whatever type of service we're talking about, correct? Right. right. And in addition to e-books, mm -hmm. we also have a service that we just launched called Hoopla. And this allows uh, downloadable audiobooks, music, TV, and films. Okay. And patrons can just use their library card to access it, and it's an app, so you can download to any of your mobile devices nice. and share the titles between devices as okay. well. Now, with those, is it sort of like you're, you're actually checking it out? So the library only has access to, let's say, f you know, one or two of a certain title. So when you check it out, just like you would a book, correct? You do, okay. but actually, it's a simultaneous access. So okay. all three of us could be um, listening or watching the same thing at the same time. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay. Now, of course, that was Hoopla. Now, Zinio, if you could talk a little bit about that, I believe that's digital magazines. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a really exciting product that the state library actually purchased for all public libraries in the state. Right. And we have access to it again with your library card and it access full color interactive uh, subscriptions to over 50 magazines. Wow. Mm -hmm. And again, no charge. Right. I can just have the library card, which of course also doesn't cost you anything. Now, are there any way the particulars for having a library card with a Suffolk library? Do you have to be a Suffolk resident only or can people in the surrounding area or how does that work? Yes. Um, anyone in, that lives in Virginia, uh, we do um, have a non-resident fee for anyone in North Carolina. Okay. So again, mm -hmm. the access is definitely there, right? Right. Yes. Now, uh, Alicia, I know we, you talked about a lot of the programs that are, that are going on, uh, not just here at North Suffolk, mm -hmm. but are throughout uh, Suffolk Libraries. But one of the things is, you mentioned the website. And again, that has yes. a nice calendar and mm -hmm. a way to find out really what's going on. If you could talk a little bit about some of the other things people might find on the website. And uh, of course, we'll have that address up on the screen. Great. So, uh, But if you could just mm -hmm. kind of talk about what's there. Great. Well, when you first come to our website, a lot of the um, programs that we want to highlight are on that main page. Right. So you can, um, and they're linked so that you can get more information about them if you click on those. Um, on the right hand side, there is some quick links there. You can learn more about the library, um, how to get a library card, um, more, you know, about our history. You can also, um, there's also um, helpful links along the side. The Affordable Care Act is really, you know, coming up and, um, you know, and though we don't have a program uh, surrounding that, we do have links that have helpful resources for, um, for patrons who want to learn more information right. about um, how that may affect them. Um, and so, you know, lots of just helpful links, lots of calendars coming up, um, you know, to, to show the kids' programs and the, the adult programs coming up. Okay. So. You know, Clint, just to jump to you for just a second, um, you know, it, it's not just about 
getting access to things. It's also a, a definite education component, I think, of Suffolk Libraries. And I think uh, some of the services and events mm -hmm. and things we're talking about today, preparing kids for school, um, you know, just obviously getting people to read, people to access different things, but also, you know, the information talked about the Affordable Care Act, some of the programs and things that go on here, the Master Gardener is another great sure. example. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really again the education component that really is starting to show itself here with Suffolk Public Libraries, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, and we like to use the term lifelong learning. So it's for, for all ages and to really bring people together to collaborate, um, even as serve as an incubator for ideas and, right. and collaboration to kind of come up with those solutions for society. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, one of the things that Suffolk Libraries offers, and <clears throat> we're going to have, I think, some of, some of you back in, in future shows to talk about this, but I'll, I'll get into it a little bit now. You also have some meeting space as well, is that correct? As mm -hmm. far as access, again, for public to have their own events and things here. Of course, obviously, you've got to make reservations and mm -hmm. coordinate all that. But Alicia, if you could talk a little bit about kind of what goes on here at North Suffolk mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Well, um, most of our programming space here is used for library programs. Right. Um, so, you know, if the public does want to um, to make an event, then they would have to go to Morgan, Morgan. Okay. to, to okay. set that All up. Right. Okay. Um, so um, we're looking into that. I'd right. love to have a, a meeting space that the public can use here, but um, but as of right now, that's kind of just in the works. I got you. I so. got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is space in the lobby. We often have small groups that Correct. meet, and yes. uh, whether they're doing tutoring or meeting one on one, right. mm -hmm. that does occur in our lobby as well. Okay. And again, I believe some of the special events also take place there as well. Yes, that's right. Because I think you can kind of manipulate mm -hmm. that space to kind of create it for an environment. You know, put some walls up and things, and yes. and make a, a an intimate setting, so mm -hmm. to speak, for some of the presentations that go on. Correct. Right. Right. We do the best with what we have, and we have sure. great partition walls right. and you know we can't it is very fl a flexible space so that's and, great and free Wi-Fi throughout all of our buildings that's a plus mm -hmm. that definitely yes. again that's a way to reach out and whether you're you know self-learning or working through any kind of the great software programs that are offered as well and again we'll talk about that in the future program some of the great offerings here okay. um, but I want to open up a question to, to both of you uh, Clint I'm gonna start with you give you a first shot but just talk about what do you do you see the, the Suffolk libraries meaning to the citizens of Suffolk and really beyond because you noted the fact that anybody who is a Virginia resident I believe can have a library card here. Um, just you know, maybe a, a brief look at your vision for where, where everything is and what's, what's really out there. Well I really feel that we can be the place where people can come and whether any age and they can meet and collaborate so whether it's families, whether it's um, nonprofit organizations when it's just people wanting to get together and meet and discuss right. so again that whole forum idea of collaboration mm -hmm. and being that incubator for ideas and I really see that that's where we're going in addition to providing our traditional you know services people sure. want to hold that book and right. read that latest bestseller or right. a classic and then also accessing things digitally because that is really where technology is taking us correct mm -hmm. and Alicia just maybe you might want to focus on North Suffolk since again you're the branch sure. manager here but just kind of your thoughts about what mm -hmm. this facility means to the community gosh I mean it is the place that they can meet and you know and collaborate like Clint said but um, you know there, we also just have so many programs and we're planning so many things right. coming up in the future um, you know the possibilities are, are just endless and I'd love to be able to collaborate with other city organizations and make it kind of a community hub so that they can learn about what um, you know human resources has what um, you know the childhood development center in Suffolk has you know just you know it's not just about the library it's about the city Correct. of Suffolk and you know just kind of being that place that they people can come and learn about what's going on in Suffolk because it is a great time to be here so. indeed very mm -hmm. very true um, and Alicia if you could give the contact phone number here if anybody would like more information about what's happening specifically here. We'll certainly mm -hmm. have the numbers up for Morgan and for Chuckatuck, but mm -hmm. what's the number to North Suffolk? Um, it's 757-514-7150. Okay. Well, again, Clint and Alicia, thank you both for being with us today on On the Scene. And, of course, we'll, again, we'll have the website address up on the screen so you can check that out again to find out what's happening throughout the Suffolk Libraries. And, again, there's three facilities, but there's a whole lot of activities going on, so you want to make sure you take part in that. Okay. Thanks for watching this edition of On the Scene. We'll see you next time.